Hey, welcome back to Beard Squid. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my workflow on using video conferencing to do online teaching. Now, everyone's been talking about Zoom um, video conferencing, but there's been big hoo-ha on the internet. Um, and of course, governments such as Singapore's government has banned schools from using uh, the Zoom application. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing some tips and tricks in using um, WebEx as an alternative to Zoom for video conferencing and online learning. What's brilliant about this is none of the participants need to be registered or have an account with WebEx. All they need is the associated app, either on the iOS or an Android um, device or on a Mac or a PC. Now moving on, I'm gonna show you how I schedule meetings instead of using my personal room and what trick I use to effectively and efficiently send it out to all participants. Okay, let's go back to WebEx and what we'll do is we'll schedule a meeting now. So I'm gonna go ahead and schedule a meeting, let's say in 10 minutes time or for this example, okay? So it's gonna be a WebEx meeting pro meeting, okay? The other option is that you have a personal conference. The personal conference is an audio meeting, okay? We're gonna have a, a video audio meeting, so we're gonna stick with the pro. Uh, meeting topic, I'm just gonna call this tutorial. Okay, that's what we're doing now. The meeting password, there are minimum requirements for the passwords. There's minimum of four characters, um, no special characters, no spaces, and not to use any uh, common phrases. But just to, to, to keep this very simple, I'm just gonna call it Fred, okay? Okay, so right now is the 18th of April. I'm gonna schedule this meeting for 10.05. Right now is about 10 o'clock. Okay, before we start um, adding email addresses for attendees, what we'll do is we'll go down to advanced options and we'll go down to scheduling options. I'm gonna show you here something, yeah? Look, uh, require an account. Attendees don't need to require an account to join the meeting. This is brilliant. Uh, no registrations required for this. And let's schedule this. So that meeting has been scheduled and we have the meeting information here. We're just gonna copy this meeting information and we're gonna set, share it out to everyone. Remember, we didn't add any attendees to the meeting. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this information here. The meeting link, the meeting number, uh, and the password, the host key, don't share the host key. The host key is for you as a host um, to start that meeting. Well, let me tell you where I'm gonna share that information. I'm gonna to go to my Google Classroom and because I have, because I think 93 to 97% of the teachers in our institution use Google Classroom, yeah? And I'm sure the percentage is quite high worldwide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to one of my classes. Here I've made one for tutorial and I'm gonna schedule this. I'm gonna give them here the meeting information, copy and paste it here. I'm gonna say, please join me, WebEx meeting. Okay, and the link is all there. And that's it. Now, the beauty of using Google Classroom is because it's gonna send it to all of your um, participants, the people in your Google Classrooms, the class list, okay? Now, if this meeting was for, let's say, Monday, I could go in here and I could schedule this meeting for a Monday. I could go in here and I could schedule it for a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or whenever, okay? Uh, I could schedule it and exactly at the same time, maybe five or 10 minutes before the meeting starts, I could schedule this meeting um, note to go out, this announcement to go out, okay? So right now I'm not gonna schedule it, I'm just gonna post it uh, because both of my, both of my um, participants, Bob and Sonny are gonna receive it on their cell phone and on the, uh, on the iPad. So that, that gives them a way to access the link so that they can go ahead and jump in to the meeting. So. Let's just check this out then. If I go to my WebEx app, it says that I have an upcoming meeting, okay? And it's called tutorial. It starts at uh, 10.05, so in a couple of minutes. And it gives you little notifications of tutorial, da 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 uh, me, Do you wanna start the meeting or do you wanna snooze it? Now the time right now is, oh actually it's 9.59, so it's gonna start in, in a couple of minutes, okay? It's gonna start in about six minutes. So I'm ready to start the meeting. I know it's scheduled, but I can start the meeting early. I'm gonna start the meeting. It's gonna connect uh, and show me my preview window. I need to look at the preview window and see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna mute myself and start the meeting. Now there's a couple of parameters here that I want you to pay particular attention to, okay? Uh, under participants, you can say mute on entry. This is a excellent option to select because as the participants join, the audio is not gonna interfere with, with the lesson or the beginning, the meeting, okay? Um, and also, in the meeting, we're gonna lock the meeting. I'm not gonna lock the meeting straight away because I want participants to join the meeting, okay? I'm gonna give it about maybe five or 10 minutes and then I'll lock the meeting. That way, no one can disturb the meeting uh, and no one who's, uh, let's say, Bob or who Sunny have shared out the meeting information can come and join the meeting. 
So since I posted or I scheduled the announcement on Google Classroom, both of my participants should have received an email. They should have an announcement from me that says, hey, uh, join the meeting, uh, here's the meeting information, and then they can go ahead and join that. Both of these participants can click on the link and it will take them to the app and it will start connecting to the meeting. So now this student has connected to the meeting. Again, I could come over here and click on the, the link. Now before I do that, I just wanna show you that, let's say student B was uh, late, it was tardy to the lesson. Uh, and so I've by that time, I've locked the meeting already. Now student B wants to join in with this meeting, okay? And they click on this link and it opens up their WebEx meeting app. Okay, I wanna join in and it's gonna give them an announcement, this meeting host has restricted access to the meeting, please contact the meeting host. Now, I can unlock, I can unlock this, okay? And I can attempt to, to join that meeting again. So let's go to my uh, email. Here we go, we wanna join that meeting. So now this, this student has uh, successfully uh, attended that meeting. Okay, so let's say uh, all your participants have joined in to the meeting. However, there's someone there that's not supposed to be there. What you can do is as the host, you could go down and click on participants icon, click the student who's not supposed to be there. For in this case, we'll do Sunny. And if you go to participants, you can now expel this student from the meeting. If you don't highlight any of you participants and you go down to participants, you can't expel anyone because you haven't selected a student. So I need to select somebody here. Okay, so select the student and then go to participants and then from here you can expel, okay? You can expel that student. So do you really wanna expel this person? Yeah, I do. Once I expel them, they, um, they'll get a notification on their device that says that the host has um, you know, expelled you from the meeting. Now, what I've shown you is two ways in which you can start um, using WebEx to do video conferencing. You can use um, your personal room, which is very straightforward and easy for you to use without any scheduling, or you can schedule your meetings. And the way I schedule the meetings, I don't add any um, attendees email addresses. I just schedule it straight. I'll copy the meeting link and I'll put it straight into Google Classroom and then that pushes out an email to everyone that they can join the meeting. A scheduling meeting is also brilliant, uh, but if you lock your meeting when you've scheduled it, then participants can't join in the meeting once you've locked it. Okay, they'll get an error message or they'll get a message to say um, the host has restricted your access to the meeting. Unable to join or start the meeting, the meeting host has restricted access to the meeting. Please contact the meeting host. So reminder, if you're scheduling a meeting and you lock your meeting, Participants either on an iOS or an Android or a Mac or a PC cannot join your meeting and you don't get a notification for it. But if you do a personal room meeting, so one of those that you haven't scheduled, you just start a meeting, uh, then what happens there is once you've locked your meeting, let's say it's you know zero minutes or five minutes, or 10 minutes, um, then you'll get a notification that so-and-so is trying to join your meeting and they're waiting in the lobby. And then what you'll do is, as the host, you'll admit them into the meeting and they'll join the meeting. So that's a very quick way um, to use WebEx to continue your online uh, teaching and learning through video conferencing. In the next video, I'm gonna show you some really key ways in which you can use WebEx to collaborate with your um, meeting participants, okay? Uh, just using the app, nothing more than just using the app. So there's no third party apps or anything. You're gonna be collaborating with different devices, okay, different participants in different parts of the world, just using the WebEx app. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, consider subscribing because there are gonna be more tutorials coming out. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.